This is the final test of 41262 on all people that have a considerable commute. I like to make a video like this. This way, if you see something that looks out of place, please point it out before you get back home. This item has been test run for probably 18 hours now, and uh, I'm happy. So what we're going to do is uh, connect it to a test panel. We're going to feed in um, the polymer cycle sine wave initially and examine that on a device. We're going to be able to hear it, but that's not going to be much of a help. We're going to be able to see the IV software here. This is uh, a bit of an adventure today. We're going to be able to see. Going on. Yeah, hang on while I navigate this new software. Yeah, let's see if this is better now. Oh well, forget about trying to pan it. We'll just do it manual. We're going to be able to see the audio on this device. If I get the light off it, we can see the, the scope better. The upper display is going to be the left channel. The lower display is going to be the right channel. And that's going to be a much more telling test than our ears. So let's back this out a little bit. Okay. So some of the things after the, um, the bulwark was done, uh, not really what I consider electronics, replacing capacitors or uh, heat conducting material. But um, the turn on delay, even though the manual says five seconds was two seconds, and that's not enough for the output stage to stabilize before the speakers are connected. And because of that, um, thumps and hum and everything else was occurring. So what I did was I changed that delay, these uh, RC time constant circuit, and that's been increased. It's approximately 15 seconds. Very nice now. The other thing that we changed and we discussed was um, this item does not disconnect the speakers as soon as you turn the power off. And um, it's almost universal that uh, on any other receiver amplifier, as soon as the power is turned off, the speakers are disconnected immediately. So what was occurring is uh, when the item was turned off, you would hear squealing, scratching, popping, um, and it's not good for your speakers. So we decided to put a relay in there, which immediately disconnects the audio. Um, so I'll demonstrate that. And the other thing is a little nuisance. Uh, during uh, one of the testings, and I don't know if you can see my finger there, but one of these LEDs was intermittent. I could tap on the front and go in and out. Um, so that entire LED panel has been resoldered. So let's uh, turn this on. And what's going to happen is um, we're going to be able to hear this pointer cycle tone that we're going to play into it at low volume. As I turn it up, it's going to distort the microphone on this camera and also damage our speakers and or my hearing. So we're going to switch it into what's called a dummy load. Dummy load stretches the amplifier just as if it was speakers but it converts the audio energy into heat energy. Okay, so let's turn it on and I'm gonna turn up the volume a little bit so we can hear when it clicks in and we'll be able to see it, but it should be somewhere around 15 seconds. I'm pretty proud about this. Um, this is a nice improvement. And so let's uh, turn it on. And somewhere around 15 seconds, it should kick in. See, right now, the, both the amplifiers are biasing up and stabilizing. And this is why it's universal. Almost every amplifier uses this type of circuit. But they're all somewhere around 8, 9, 10 seconds away. Here you go. Uh, the stopwatch said 18 seconds on that. Very nice. So what I'm going to do is, uh, 
what I'm going to do is switch over to the dummy load, and then we're going to run this to full power, and we're not going to run it very long. But full power is achieved when the sine waves on the oscilloscope, remember the left channel is the upper display, the lower is the right, and we'll, we'll zoom in on that here. Upper is left, lower is right. Yeah, yeah, I'm having fun with this new software. So I'm going to turn this up. You'll see the sine waves change. I, I just switched over to dummy load. Now we're going to... Full, full power is achieved when the top and the bottom of the sine waves start to square wave, right? Right there! Whoa! We don't want to stay there too long. That's when we blow things up. But uh, if you notice, the symmetry is, um, the clipping is symmetrical, meaning the positive half of the waveform and the negative half of the waveform clip at the same points, same time, same level. Very nice. So what we'll do also is we'll do a frequency response test on this. And now that this has all new uh, capacitors, the frequency response should be flat. Um, I don't know what the specs are on this, but we'll start really low. And the way we're going to do this is the signal generator that's sending 400 hertz, I can select what that's going to send. So we'll start at, I don't know, 20 hertz. So what's going to happen is on the oscilloscope, because the frequency is changing, the waveform is going to be spread out when we start at a low frequency. For instance, right now, again, it's 400, right? And what I really want you to look at is... We get a better uh, idea of how flat the frequency response is by, here we can get both of these in the picture at the same time. There we go. The horizontal, um, there's two horizontal lines. The upper line is also the left channel, lower is right. And you can see they're both within a decibel of each other. Okay, so what we're going to do is let's drop the frequency now. Here's a. Uh, Oh, I think that says 250. There's 100. Notice how the waveform is uh, starting to flatten out because I haven't changed the uh, the sweep frequency on this. Oh, there's 100. There's 63. There's wow! Look at that. 40 hertz. It's still flat. And this generator goes down to 20. Let's check 20 out. Wow. Okay. Now we're going to bring it back up. And you can see as I change the frequency, the uh, waveform on the scope is representing the higher frequency. Oh, right now we're at uh, 1K. Hasn't changed. You can see how that's different now. 1K. We're... That's 20K right there. Look at look at the bar graph. They haven't changed a fraction of a decibel from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. Now, that's what we're on, 20K. Uh, this machine is uh, uh, nice, once again. And so let me back this out. And here's your bar graphs, by the way. And so I'm going to bring the generator back to 400 hertz. We're going to back this down a little bit so we don't destroy our ears. And that's what it sounds like. But we can also go. Oh. Oh, oh, that's right. We want to do the other thing. Is we're going to turn it off. And notice how when we turn it off, there's no more snap, crackle, pop, hum, howl, or anything else. It's just instantaneous silence. Okay? Here we go.
silence, just the way it should be. Um, one of the things while, while I'm doing this is you should never turn an amplifier on or off at high volume. It's always best to have it at zero volume. Um, that way there's less uh, signal trying to bridge uh, the gaps of the uh, speaker relay contacts when we make or break those gaps. Okay, that's the end of this. I'm going to upload this and we're moving on to the next item. This was a fun project.